everyone, and welcome to Jenny's Tattle Tales. I'm Jenny Heckman. I'm a fantasy romance writer of the Heaven and Earth series. And this lovely lady to my right is Andrea Florescu. Uh, she, she is the marketing manager for Celtic uh, Butterfly Publishing. And today we have fantasy romance author Helen Johannes, and she writes the series Crown of Tolum. And today we're spotlighting her book called The Lord of Drew Marwin. Uh, you're doing a character interview today uh, on the website. So this is a chance to, for us to get to, to know you. So welcome, Helen. So excited Hi. that you're here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Um, so you, you did your character interview on uh, Lady Rael. Why did you yes. choose her to, to do your character interview on? Well, she was kind of the driver of the book. Um, and she's a in a way, she's a tad more interesting in um, her vibrancy than my hero, who's pretty, um, has to suffer a lot. So oh. <laughs> she's more, um, she has more of an, uh, a single mindedness about her. So it was more interesting to do her backstory. And besides that, he was in my previous book. He was um, okay. the, he, he was introduced and he was a major character in the first book, okay. but he didn't get his happily ever after completely delineated in that book so I knew him better than I knew her so in the sense of doing the interview it was like to find out you know play with her a little more sure yeah and so you write fantasy romance and I'm looking at your website which is lovely by the way uh and it has kind of like a historical feel to it is this kind of set your fantasy romances are they kind of set more historically or are they where are they at are I prefer a medieval tile style location. So I actually have two kinds of fantasies. Um, the one that's much more historical in nature and less fantastical, except for the setting, which is totally a world I created. And the other type, which has more mag actual magic in it. Oh, cool. So okay. The, and the Crown of Tullum is the more historical type in its own world. Oh, cool. Okay. Very neat. Okay, so and I'm looking at um, this picture that's on your website. It looks like it's the ruins of a church. It's actually the abbey in York, England. It's the oh, okay. ruined abbey. Okay, it's, it's gorgeous. I was over in Europe a little bit ago um, in Scotland and I saw a lot of ruins and I was wondering if it was one of those. So, But England has a lot of beautiful ruins as well. Oh, they do. Uh, yeah. We've done several trips over in that area. So I've got photos and I use that one oh, with a little enhancement. Yeah, it's really cool. I really like your website. Uh, Thank you. What is, what's the hardest, most unusual, or interesting part um, of this story's research? So when you were researching it, uh, did you have a, a, a unusual, hard, any any kind of challenges with any of that? Um, my research isn't as most people think of going around looking up in websites and finding things. My research has been kind of drawing on the experiences I've had throughout my life. And um, once upon a time, I was going to be a history major. Oh. I ended up being a German and English major. So double majored in my German stories and my German history and the English history and the English stories have laid the groundwork for a lot of the things that I put into my book. Plus, um, I'm a military brat. So I've actually lived in Germany and visited those ruins. And of course, since then, I've also traveled uh, and to those places. So it's not so much I go out and hunt up something as I think about things and it comes out in my more or less fertile imagination. Wonderful. And do you plot or pants then? It sounds like you might even, you might pants more than you, than you plot. I, I term what I do being an into the mist writer. Oh, so it's a it's a pantser who has a plan. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't mean the plan ch doesn't change. So generally, when I start, I need a, I need the characters. I need to have a general idea of where I'm going and what I want them to do, and I need to have a couple of chapters in my head. And after that, it's okay. Let's see where this takes me. Oh, I like and that. Usually, there is a major surprise somewhere along the way that my brain put in the first part but I didn't recognize until later and oh. decided, oh, I need to capitalize on that. So oh, that's that. happened in all of my books. Something surprising has been laid in the beginning that later came to be very, very useful. And you've written several books. How, how many have you written? 
I have four published books. Wonderful. Three are adult fantasies and one is a children's fantasy. Oh, I, I did see that. Uh, it's a little, little, is it frog? Yeah, it's little a frog. frog. Yeah. Frederick That's... Flycatcher, yes. <laughs> That's very cute. <laughs> Um, me, okay, here's, here's a little bit more of a challenging one. So you know how you'll read a book and then they make it into a movie and you're always disappointed in the movie. So I'm going to do the reverse. What movie have you seen that has been better than the book? Do you have one? Um, actually I probably do, but my brain is freezing on it right uh, now. My, it's all uh, cool. <laughs> um, actually, I think I have seen some that I've enjoyed more the, um, the movie, it made it, I mean, I read all the Lord of the Rings books, but I think I enjoy watching the movies better because while Tolkien is fantastic and imaginative and amazing and his world creation, he's also very wordy. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you can go true. through his movies in a little less time and get the sense of what's going on in there. Um, although he did kind of blow Eowyn's um, final romance because the movies kind of blew that because they just, you know, I liked Eowyn. Yeah. But she didn't quite get the happily ending as just kind of hinted at in the movie. Oh, okay. No, I, I, I think some of those epic sweeping novels that can happen. I think you, you, mm -hmm. you have so much um, illustration and scene, scenic stuff that sometimes the actual language and, and storyline gets a little. You know, that missed. was my complaint about the Julia Quinn. You know, everybody's crazy about the Bridgerton series, which I think the series is better than the book. <laughs> I read all of them, but one of the complaints I had about her books, I enjoyed the stories, but some of them, they're so wordy and it, oh. it took her two chapters to just go through one scene. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that was too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read some of the other books in her Rokesby series and her pre Bridgerton, but I hadn't read the actual Bridgertons, but you're right. The Bridgerton series on Netflix was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna you're gonna complete this sentence. No. Your life would be absolutely complete if. Well, right about now, if I got my COVID vaccine. <laughs> oh <laughs> have you been stuck in the house? Oh yes, for a year. Oh gosh. Oh wow. That's, it's so, such a long time. I'm, I know, hopefully yeah. it's coming soon. Um, so, but yeah, I would, um, I would really like to sell a few more books and be a little better known. Yeah. Um, but and the ultimate satisfaction though is I, you know, I like my life the way it is. I've got a, a husband I love and a family that I love. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good. So I really don't need a whole lot of things, but yeah, a few more books would be nice. Yeah, yeah. When you said you're in Wisconsin, you said it's pretty cold there too. So yeah. that also I probably- I don't mind being able to go on a cruise again. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> I know we were supposed to be going to Italy last year and when COVID hit, we were supposed to be going in June and and then we were, we were scheduled for this year, but I, you know, it doesn't sound like things are gonna be opening up anytime soon. No, and I've got on my bucket list, I'd like to do a river cruise in Europe just to go back and see the things that I haven't seen for a couple of years now. Yeah, those are really cool. Uh, yeah, I, we have a friend that does the river that just did a river cruise up there and uh, just had the best time. Said it's so personal and and fun and friendly and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. How about um, is there a message in your novels that you want readers to grasp? In in particular, uh, Lord of Dru Drumarin. Is there a is there a message? Uh, the message. Uh, a message for all of my books as part of my tagline is hearts in search of home and all of my characters feel at some point that they're outsiders or they don't fit into their current status or culture or place. So they're looking for a family, but it's not the family necessarily that's made from blood. It's the family that they build around themselves. Oh, I love so that. They're all looking for that belonging, that sense of belonging to build out that new, um, new family. Yeah. I think that's true for pretty much everyone on the planet, right? We're all trying yeah. to figure that out. So that's that's really cool. I like that. I like that. Um, and the other message that I usually put in there is to do is don't judge a person by where they came from or what they might look like or what their culture says or is or what you think about their culture and background because chances are they're really not sensitive of that stereotype. Yeah. 
And, and I think you're right. People will put limitations on somebody based off of whatever they think about it. And then they can blow that limitation all over the place. So yeah, you can't, that's, that's a very true. We just watched a movie last night that had that uh, hill, hillbilly, hillbilly oh, elegy. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. same exactly that, that, that gentleman, uh, overcame an awful lot to get where he was at. So, I mean, it was a very interesting, it was a very interesting thing. I think that's very true. The um, crown of that crown of Tollum series is based on the idea that a kingdom was broken into three parts, and each part now has a an image that is derogatory, so they don't get along. Oh. Um, but they see each other; they're they're fighting each other, trying to. And my the crown of Tollum is to bring it back together. So my oh, hero in the first book is trying to bring it back together. My hero in the second book is helping him bring it back together. But in the meantime, they have to navigate the fact that. This is the warlike group. This is the cheaters, and these are the people who don't want to take sides. Yeah. Oh, I like that. So you, um, so with your first book, those characters also carry over into your second book. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. And will they do that throughout your series? I expect so. Yeah. Um, they yeah. have. Um, I've got plenty of material. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. What are you working on right now? Uh, right now, I have a potential novella in this series dealing with one of the characters from the first book okay. um, and it's also exploring uh, the situations but in one of the lands but mostly focused on that one particular land rather than all three of them okay all right and how many books are going to be in this series honestly think? i have no idea yeah, you're just gonna <laughs> keep going until you're done yep, yep. it will tell you eventually yes. <laughs> perfect Okay, uh, so when you are envisioning a character, uh, do you, how do you do that? Do you do storyboards? Do you just put them all in your mind? Do you write them out? When you're putting together your characters, how are you fleshing them out? They talk to me. Ah. <laughs> uh, I don't do storyboards. I've, uh, I've seen you know, character descriptions and all of that, but um, I just put them in action and then they do things. Ah, perfect. Okay, so you just see it kind of in your mind and you get them out, you can get them out onto the paper. I have a sense of what they look like and, and how they might behave, but then they amazingly blow my mind as they go along. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one final question for you. What would you most like to say to your readers? It can be whatever you want. I think that romance is truer than other types of fiction, it's about finding your heart, finding your, your place in the world, finding how to interact with people in a positive way. It's not just what, you know, people think of the romance as you know, fiction. No, it's about actually finding a way to get along with people, finding your home and um, being happy, finding ways yeah. of happiness. Yeah, I think that's why it's the number one genre, right? I mean, you know, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll give give romance writers a lot of hard times, but really they do make the world go around, I think, you know, it's they're real stories. And I did want to show you the covers if you would like to. Oh, there yes. is, this is this book. Lord of oh, Tomorrow. it's beautiful. And, and here's the first book, Prince of oh. Alfe Ridge. Oh, wonderful. And, and, and is that Lady Riel on that first cover? Yes, this is okay. Riel. And oh, she is a very um, adventurous young woman. She looks sassy. Oh, yeah. She's determined. <laughs> uh, a little out of her time because she's aggressive. Um, this is the, this is my other fantasy, um, Bloodstone. Bloodstone. It's a, it's a oh, Beauty I see it. and the there Beast. Go. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I like that. A take on Beauty and the Beast. Yep. And this is the lovely... Frederick Flycatcher. Uh, <laughs> it's very thin. <laughs> uh, I wanted to prove I could write short. I love that. <laughs> that one looks pretty cute. Oh, well, I just really wanted to say thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you and, and see you. And it's kind of nice when you can uh, have a 3D person to talk to, talk to right. here. And so uh, thank you so much for coming on and joining us. Uh, if you thank want you. to... Uh, learn more about Helen or actually learn more about Lady Riel because you're doing a character interview today, uh, run over to JennyHeckman.com and onto the Jenny's Tattle Tales and you can read all about Lady Riel. Riel. Um, or you can also go to Helen's uh, website at HelenCJohannes.blogspot.com. 
So thank you again. I hope you have a great day. Stay warm out there in Wisconsin. Oh, we will. We will. <laughs> thank you. And you too. Stay dry. Yes. Thanks so much. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, bye. Okay. I think that's going to wrap it up for Jenny's Tabletales Tales today. I hope you have an absolutely splendid day. And I want to really thank you for joining me. And I hope to hear from you and see you next time.